Europe is literally the creation of the third world. Franz Fanon Hello you all. Today we are going to talk about one of the defining forces of the history of mankind, colonialism. Hold on to your knowledge of social sciences a bit because we are in for a jolty mental ride. Colonialism was the basis of the founding of an entirely new subject of studies. Take a guess. Which one? Because the colonial rulers were never the legitimate rulers of the lands they colonized, they studied the values, beliefs and traditions of the incumbent people of their colonies. The studies done developed the view of culture that we have today as an anthropological concept under sociology. Before colonialism happened, there was no formal concept of culture and the state's organized regulation of culture started when the ruthless colonial masters had to rule the people of the usurped lands. Then the creation of nation states and having the forces that enforced their existence required a system of ideas and emotions that integrated the people of the area forming into a country. The segregation of humans into beings that are identified differently from one another was based on geography, race, history and language. Any topic that relates to humanities can spring up in a plethora of directions. Still, we shall try to keep this video as concise as possible with the focus on the thought of colonialism and how it has manifested itself in today's world order. Colonialism is different from imperialism, where imperialism is the economic and political control of a country over another state or territory, and colonialism is the domination and subjugation of one set of people over another, done at times through military power. Even though colonialism as the idea falls under the broader concept of imperialism, the word colonialism originated from the Latin word colonus. This means that the idea is that the colonizers, i.e. the population which has come to settle in the area, have its loyalty and allegiance to their original land and will only use the resources of the colonized land for their homeland. Take the Oxford Dictionary's definition of colonialism. The practice by which a powerful country controls another country or countries. So, in colonialism, the people of the colonizing power actually move physically to the land being occupied, usually involving a lot of killing and violence. Whereas, imperialism can be done through soft power as well. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy refers to colonialism as a type of imperialism. Political thinkers have always argued against colonialism's legitimacy, but it was not until recently when more liberal ideas started spurring from the intelligentsia into the mainstream civil society that the colonizing of countries was realized as a deplorable established practice. There were debates in favor of both colonialism and universalism and imperialism and for equality in general. Those who talked about the pros of colonialism argued that the host countries got better infrastructure, increased trade, and improved healthcare system. Similarly, they claimed that the agriculture, democratic, and governance practices were also improved. We do agree with their point of view to some extent, but the problem is that all of those things benefited the colonizers, at least until the colonizers were there. Even after they left, the damages done in other areas were so enormous that they heavily outweighed the positives. Gone are the days when people like Milton Friedman could downplay the perils of colonialism due to the masses having limited access to information. A 2017 article in Third World Quarterly, the leading journal of scholarship and policy in the field of international studies, created an international spur of outrage against the article and the journal. Bruce Guiley, an associate professor of political science at the Portland State University, claimed that the solution to poverty and economic underdevelopment in parts of the Global South was to reclaim colonial modes of governance by recolonizing some areas and by creating new Western colonies from scratch. 
it fell right in line with the civilizing mission narrative. But it was so bizarre that a petition started online calling for its removal and many on the journal's editorial board resigned. The petition was assigned by so many academics and scholars from around the world that TWQ had to retract the article and the author issued an apology. Now we are staunch supporters of a freedom of speech. But you are right to swing your verbal fist and where the nose of facts begin. By the way, do you know that a 2014 poll by YouGov regarding the British Empire revealed that 59% of the Britishers believe that the British Empire was something to be proud of. Keeping in mind that YouGov is the most popular but also the most controversial poster in the UK. Articles like Bruce Kiley's The Case for Colonialism help aggravate such thoughts and amalgamate them into Western countries' foreign policy.